Father in heaven, I ask that you would help us to understand and experience this wonder-working power that's in the blood. May we truly um, choose for your blood to cover us today. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'm not going to talk too long today. Any amens? Okay. As I know, the communion service, we have a lot of the message is just from the experience as we go through this, so I'm not going to talk too long. But I want to ask a question. First, I'll say last weekend was the end of Passover this year. And that points to a time which we was read in the scripture back to Egypt, which we'll look at momentarily. But was that the only Passover, or is there another one coming? Is there a Passover 2.0? What do you think? So we're going to consider that today. But let's look back. You can turn to Exodus chapter 12. We'll look at a few verses, some that were already read, but we'll... Look at him a little closer. So God had decided it was time to deliver his people. Um, And so he had sent Moses, as you know, to to go to Pharaoh. Pharaoh said, no, you're not leaving. Who is your God? I should listen to him anyway. And so Pharaoh refused. So God sends plagues. Who here, don't recite them out loud, but who here could list all ten in order? Raise your hand. Okay, not so many. I will read them first. It was a water to blood. Then he sent the frogs, then lice, then flies, then a livestock disease, then boils and hail and locusts and darkness, and then then comes the tenth. And so God was trying to teach them through an object lesson um, the plan of salvation, really. And so God says... This last plague, this is the one they're going to make you, they're going to tell you to go. They're going to let you go after I do this one. And so this plague, the other plagues, the first three fell on, on the Israelites, but most of these plagues did not. But God indicated that this tenth plague could fall on the Israelites. And the plague being the firstborn son will die. Raise your hand if you are a firstborn son. Okay, I, I am. So this story adds a little meaning for some of us. So the firstborn son will die over all the land. I would be nervous as a firstborn son at this point. But I have a plan. And we read that plan, verse 12, let's look at it again, Exodus chapter 12, verse 12, for I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute what? Judgment, I am the Lord. And now the blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. When I see the blood, I will what? Pass over, hence the the name of the feast, Passover. I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. So this day shall be to you a memorial. You shall keep it as a feast to the Lord through your generations. You shall keep it as a feast by an everlasting ordinance. I would suggest to you when we do communion, that this is a Christian version of Passover. This is their annual reminder of what Christ has done. The blood, they remembered the blood on the doorpost. We remember the blood shed on the cross for us. So, if I was a son then, I would be pretty interested in my father making sure that there was blood on the doorpost of my house. Wouldn't you? And as a father... I would be very interested in being sure that there's blood on the doorpost of my house because I wouldn't want Caleb to die. And so that night is a night of judgment. As God comes through, he has warned everyone. Even the Egyptians probably heard, and we don't know, but some of them may have put the blood on their doorpost for their sons. 
because they knew that this God who had sent all the other plagues was not a joking God. And he said it, it happened. And so there may have been some Egyptians that were saved um, by that blood on the doorpost too. And so would you say that the Israelites firstborn were saved that night? Could that be said? They were saved from the plague, were they not? Saved by what? Saved by the blood. Saved by the blood. I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Is there another day of judgment coming? Is that judgment coming for all the firstborn? Males. Yes. <laughs> and everyone that's sitting here, right? And every one of your neighbors and everyone in our state and everyone in this world, a day of judgment will come. And what will happen that day? Let's look at a couple verses quick. Romans chapter 3, uh, verses 21 to 26. Romans chapter 3, 21 to 26. I'm really cutting out like half or more of my verses today. But this is a good one. Romans chapter 3. It says in verse 21, But now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in who? In Jesus Christ. To all and on all who believe, there's no difference. Amen? It doesn't matter where we're from, what our color is, where we were born. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. How many of us when this judgment comes, should die. Yeah, the judgment is coming. Every one of us should die. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God sent forth as a propitiation by what? By His blood, through faith, to demonstrate His righteousness because of, in His forbearance God had what? Passed over. So was there another Passover? The first Passover was in the Garden of Eden. Did you know that? Adam and Eve should have died for their sin right then, shouldn't they? But God passed over their sin temporarily because he had a plan to provide a Savior for them. So God has already passed over yours and my sin because with the first sin we should be gone. So that's another Passover. But God has done that temporarily. He passed over their sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of one who has faith in Jesus. God can't pass over sin forever, can he? Eventually, sin has to be dealt with. And so there comes a time, the Bible talks about, um, when Paul was talking to, I believe it was Felix, he says, Now as he reasoned about righteousness, self-control, and judgment to come. In the Bible, there's a lot about judgment to come. God's judgment will come for you. How does that make you feel? Happy? Excited? You want to dance? It's kind of, uh, it's kind of sobering, isn't it? Each one of us will be judged. And I think you don't doubt that. I don't have to proof text this to death for you. There is a day of judgment that is coming. So, when that judgment day comes for you, what will happen? It's going to be just like Egypt. God is going to go through the records of every person, and he's either going to destroy... Or, or what? Pass over. How does he pass over? He passes over those who have the blood of Christ that has been applied to them. We're not putting on a doorpost. We're not putting on the sides and on the top like it was then. But for those of us who have accepted Christ and his blood for us, when that blood is seen on our record, what will happen? What will God do? He will pass over. He will pass over you, and you have escaped the judgment that you deserve for your sin. Amen? That's Passover 2.0, if you will. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. Just a couple verses. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7. 
the Bible tells us, in him, that's in Christ, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Amen. According to his riches of grace, we have forgiveness of sins. And so, yes, could there, he look at our record and find something t- that we should be destroyed for? You better believe it. But because of the richness of his grace, when we've asked for forgiveness, the blood of Jesus has come over and covered our sin, and the record is clean. He can pass over. Those sins have already been died for. There's no reason to destroy us, too. Jesus died for those. And so we are justified by his blood, Romans 5, verse 9 tells us. Revelation 5, verse 9 says, we are re- we have been, He has redeemed us to God by the blood, the blood of Christ. Revelation 12, verse 11 says, And they overcame him by the what? By the blood of the Lamb. Are you covered by the blood? Are you? If you are covered by the blood, is there anything to fear in the judgment? Being a firstborn, if I lived then and, and I knew what God had asked and the blood was on, on the doorpost of my house, would there be any reason for me to fear? No, if I really believed God, right? You know I love my kids. If the blood is applied on my house, is there any reason for me to fear for Caleb? No. And so as we think of the judgment, if the blood of Christ has been accepted by us and applied to us by faith, is there anything for us to fear in the judgment? No. Because our confidence is in what? Our confidence is in the blood, in what God has done for you and for me. Are you covered by the blood? We had a car accident. When you have a car accident, what do you want? You want, you want the, the accident covered, right? Covered by insurance. And probably told this story before, but Beth got pushed off the road by a semi. He had come into the, she was already in the left lane. It was two-lane interstate. He moved over, didn't see her, pushed her off. She ended up going into the median where the grass was, over a sign. Finally thought everything's okay. Looks back, Caleb and Ryan are like two and four years old, two and three and a half years old. And then she sees fire coming up the outside, thankful that the windows are closed. And going over that sign had somehow ripped up something under the car and had caused a fire. You know they're safe because you've seen them today. <laughs> you've seen them. The car was totaled. We had driven that car for two years and about 40,000 miles. At that point, is it kind of a big deal to have your car covered? It was to me. And so because we were covered by insurance, we actually ended up getting more money somehow than we had paid for the car. It's like, wow, free miles for two years, plus a little bonus. Is it important if we have an accident to be covered? Our church, we are covered by liability insurance. We are covered by other insurance. You yourselves probably have health insurance. When you're sick, you want to be covered, don't you? And for you and me, when it comes to the judgment, we need coverage, amen? Amen. We need to be covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. And just like my insurance gave us more money than we had paid for the car, when God, when the blood of Christ is applied to us, we end up in better shape than before we had sinned. Here's why I say that. God is setting up his capital here on earth. When everything is made new, we end up closer to God than we were before. Is that some pretty good coverage? So today I ask, are you covered by the blood? As we accept the the emblem of Jesus' life, the emblem of his body and of his blood, 
My prayer is that you will accept that coverage. That when your Passover, when the time comes that you can experience Passover too, because when the judgment day comes for you, you have the coverage of the blood, and he will pass over judgment on you because he's already judged Christ in your place. Let's be appreciative that God has offered this coverage for us today. At this time, we're going to have our foot washing. That will be downstairs. If you're not sure where to go, just follow the correct gender. Um, or if you're a couple, follow a couple. And there will be a children's story. Uh, the children can go in the back room there, um, the, what we call the father's room. And so you can have your children go there. And then we'll be up and we'll do the, the emblems when we return.